Hello and welcome to JavaScript Evangelist. So in today's video, we are going to create an Angular 4 project and we are specifically going to create a blog application using Angular 4. So in previous video, we learned how to install Node.js and Angular CLI as well as TypeScript. I'm going to use an IDE called WebStrom. You may also use uh, Microsoft Visual Code Editor or maybe Sublime Text. To tell you about the project which we are going to create, that is the blog application using Angular 4. By the way, Angular 2 and Angular 2, they both are same. There is no syntax change as there was a syntax change from Angular 1 to Angular 2. So that was a complete rewrite. But Angular 2, Angular 4, they are all same. It's just a version upgrade to the existing Angular 2. Uh, they are going to be newer version of Angular every four and five months from Google. And uh, don't worry about all of them. Uh, so yeah, this is, you can call it as an Angular 2 project. So once you download and install latest version of Angular CLI, by default, you will be downloading Angular 4, at least for now. Uh, if you're watching this video from future, you might be using a newer version of Angular 4, maybe 5 and 6. Okay. All right. So about the project, this project, I'm going to create simple components and simple service. But as we progress, we'll be adding newer content to the project. Basically, uh, we are going to create the blog application in a traditional way. But later on, as the project progresses, we are going to add CRUD operations. So we are going to create, read, update and delete from database. For the database, we are going to use Firebase. So for now, let's get started with the project. Open your terminal or command prompt on Windows. Okay. To create a new project, you need to type ng and new and the project name. But make sure you have the latest version of Node.js uh, Node and as well as Angular CLI installed. Okay, to create a new project, you have to type ng new and the project name. I'm going to name my project as blog ng4, which will also create a folder called blog ng4. Uh, Creating a new project uh, takes a little bit of time. Angular CLI creates a package.json file and after that it runs npm install. So it downloads and installs a lot of packages from Node version, a Node package manager. Once the uh, project has been downloaded and installed, uh, cd to the project folder, that is blog ng4 and type ng serve to run the development server. Okay. Also, uh, make sure once everything is downloaded and installed, open the project into your favorite IDE. I'm using WebStrom. Once you open WebStrom, you'll face something like this if you're using different version of Node.js. So this error denotes that it is not able to find the correct version of TypeScript. WebStrom has an inbuilt TypeScript service. So click on this TSLint settings and choose the correct version of Node.js. I'm going to choose 6.9.1 and hit OK. Once you choose OK, it will take a little bit of time after indexing and this error will vanish after a while. So to show you the project, we have created a folder blog ng4. Inside blog ng4, there is a main folder called src. All your packages, they're installed under package.json. All the scripts are also inside package.json. These are the dependencies and these are the dev dependencies. Inside src folder, there is a main file called main.ts, which takes care of scaffolding the entire application. We are not going to go deeper into this. I want you to know about Angular project faster. You can get to know about the deeper understanding about all these module files as you progress along. But for now, let's just dive into our app. Open the app folder. Inside app folder, you will find an app module file. This is a really important file. So whenever we create any modules, you have to add it to the declaration. Whenever you create any service, and if you want the service to be singletons, you have to uh, provide it under the providers so that the, uh, the service gets available to the entire application. Same thing with the components. You have to add it under the declarations so that components become available to your entire application. All right, so this is app module TypeScript file and you have ng module inside it. If you look at the app, there is a by default 
app component installed for you and it has a prefix called app root. You can change this prefix from package file. If you have seen my previous video, you know about why there is a hyphen. So make sure you check out my previous video about web component basics. All right, so let's just view our project. Open localhost and port is 4200. And you'll see it says app works. And if you inspect on this, you can see the uh, component name as well. So we are inside app root and this is the app component. And if you have installed a plugin called Anguri, it will show you how your project has scaffolded. So we are using app component right now. I'm going to go to app component and change it over your something called JavaScript Evangelist. That is my channel name. And you don't even have to refresh. It will automatically reload it for you. Okay. If I refresh over here, my Angular updates over here and it shows the new data over here. Okay. So going back to the project, we are going to generate few components. And as I mentioned before in the web components basics, an Angular application is a set of a lot of tiny components and all those tiny components should be merged together to create a bigger web application. So we are going to generate few components, open a new terminal window, keep this window running, open a new tab for the terminal. On Windows, you could open new command prompt and type, you have to type ng, g stands for generate and the component. And the component name I'm going to type is posts container. Post container should be used uh, for loading up all our posts. I'm going to do that. Once you add a post container component, you can see a new folder gets created inside app folder. That is post hyphen container. And if you look at the post container TypeScript file, you will see post container component class has been created. We'll come to this file in a moment, go back to your app module file and you'll notice something over here that Angular CLI automatically adds post container import over here and it adds it under the declarations of ng module. Now go back to your post container component. We'll see what is this component? What is this class now? So by default, this is how a component looks. A component has a decorator called at component. At component is a function provided to us by Angular. So an at component function should be followed by a class. This is post container component class. This is how you write a class and we are exporting it over here. You can even omit this and you can later on at the last line, you can say export post component container and you can export it like this, but I would prefer it that you should keep the export over here. So this is the class class is inheriting on init lifecycle method. We'll learn about lifecycle methods later on in the video. A class has a constructor. This is the lifecycle method, which we uh, inherited from on init. Basically, we are doing a polymorphism over here. Learning more about component decorator. A component decorator accepts in metadata. A metadata has the information about the selector. So this selector denotes that how your component should be loaded. So if I go to the app component, default component that is the TypeScript file inside the HTML. If I load over here app hyphen post container component. And if you go back to my browser, you will see post container works has been displayed. And if you inspect on this, you can see this is our app post container component. Now I'm going back to my post container component. So selector 
by default will have a prefix app and it will have a hyphen followed by the name of the component. Then after that, you will have template URL, styles URL. You can even instead of using a template uh, URL, you can use something called template, which is something like this. I'll just remove this and just type template called ES6 uh, template decorators or <laughs> template strings. You could call it as template strings. Okay. So inside this h4 tag saying this is app post container, give it a comma and let's see how it works. All right, it works fine. You can even remove the style URLs. Instead, you could just say, you can even type styles. Styles accepts an array of styles. Uh, so in our case, we have an h4 over here. I'm going to give it a color of red. Let's see how it looks. And the style gets applied. There is more to this component decorator. Uh, there is something called strategy for the change detection. We are going to learn more about strategy later on in the next videos. So that's how a basic component looks like. But the preferred and the good way is to use a template URL and style URLs instead. So I'm going to stick with the style URL and the template URLs. Let's add a few more components. So I'm going to go to the terminal. I'm going to type ng g c. C is a short form for the com uh, component. So ng generate component. I'm going to add navigation. After that, I'm going to add uh, one more component that is post, single post. So basically uh, we are going to, in, in our post container, we are going to receive a lot of posts from the database or maybe it's JSON file. And those data, we are going to pass it to our child component that is the single post component. So I'll name it as single post and generate. And if you look at the project tree, you can see we have navigation, post container and single post. And if you look at the app module, Angular CLI automatically adds it to the ng module declarations. So this is the newly created uh, components, three new components we created and they get added under the declarations. Now I don't want single post open. Uh, you can keep it over here. It will still work fine. But uh, just for the learning purpose, I want the single post container to be inside the post container folder. So you can even drag it inside over here like this, but I'm going to delete it from here. Once you delete a component, you'll see that inside the ng module or the app module, this will show an error. Just remove this line as well remove this line. So we are going to generate single post inside our post container folder. So command which I'm going to do is ng g c for component. And I want it to be specifically inside post hyphen container folder. And the component name is single post and hit enter. And now you can see inside post container, we have one more folder called single post and it also gets added to our app modules file under the ng modules declarations, single post component. So this is the basic about uh, components. Let's just see uh, how it looks on our browser now. All right, so there is no change over here. So we need to add those component, newly created components. Go to your app component TypeScript file, go to the HTML, about this h1 tag, I'm going to add our navigation. And I'll just remove this. Let's see how it looks. So our navigation gets added over here. Now inside post container component, I want to add the single post. So go to the post container. 
post container HTML. Inside post container HTML, I'm going to add our child component that is app single post. And let's see how it works. All right, it looks good. And if you inspect on this, you can notice that post container component has a child called app single post. So now let's add a service. Creating a service is again fairly simple with Angular CLI. To generate a service, you have to type ng g, g for generate and service and the service name. I'm going to create our service inside a folder called shared and I'm going to name my service as posts. So post service gets generated inside shared folder. And if you look at the folder structure now, you can see inside the app folder, we have a folder called shared and inside that we have our post service. Also, the CLI gives us a warning service is generated, but not provided. What does it mean? We'll come to that. If you look at the service, this is a default service which gets generated from Angular CLI. So when you create a service, a service has to have few public methods. So it will also have a constructor. We'll come to injectable decorator in a moment. Let's just add a public method. I'll just call get uh, name. This is a get name function and it returns us a string. This is returning me a name. So why not uh, specify it over here? Uh, so this is the function name and we are specifically telling that this function is going to return you a string. So we can specify over here that what we are going to return. Let's see if we can use this service inside a post container component. Go to the post container component TypeScript file. To load a service, you have to pass it in this constructor as a variable. So I'm going to call it as post service and post service will be loaded as post service. So we have loaded this post service and the post service has a method over here. I'm going to uh, call it inside ng on init. So I'm going to do a console log over here. This dot post service dot get name and it should print us the name, the string which is inside over here. All right, let's see if it works. And I'm reloading and I'm getting a lot of errors. No provider for post service. So yes, this is what our Angular CLI was warning us. We created the service called post service, but we didn't specify it under the app module. So whenever you create a service, you have to specify it under the providers. So I'm going to add a service over here called post service and my WebStorm smartly imports it over here. Let's say if you add it like this, so in WebStorm, you can select this and hit keyboard keys called Alt plus enter and your WebStorm will smartly import it over here. And now if you go back to your browser and refresh, the error should be gone. Refresh again and we get the console log. So that's how you create a service. Whenever you create a service, you have to also add it to the providers array. Remember that? Okay, going back to the post service. So what is this add injectable? Remember, we just injected this post service from the constructor function into the component, post container component. Same way, if you want to inject other services into the constructor of this post service, you have to have the add injectable decorator over here. Add injectable is a decorator function provided to us by Angular which specifies that if you add this function, then you are allowed to inject other services such as in this case, let's say if we have to make a HTTP AJAX call. So I'm going to add it and HTTP service over here as HTTP. This function 
accepts a new service in the constructor only when <clears throat> you specify the at injectable decorator. All right. And when you add this post service to the app module under the providers, the service becomes a singleton service so that you instantiate the service only once. This was the basics about creating a component and creating a service into new Angular project. In the next video, we are going to learn about DOM manipulation with Angular components. So stay right there. See you in the next video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It will really motivate me to keep on adding new videos. Thanks for watching.